when I'm talking about women's confidence, I always sort of try and ask questions like, would you like to be able to stand up for yourself at all times? Would you like to be able to deal well with difficult and rude people all of the time? Would you be able to feel good about yourself? Would that be good if you could feel about you know, yourself in a way that's really loving and accepting even 90% of the time? Um, and I'll explain a little bit later on why I ask you that because as women, we're so good at being down on ourselves and not supporting ourselves. Would you like to switch off the negative chatter that goes on in your head and how often does that chatter go on? I'll never be able to do this. I'll never be able to get into that dress. I don't think I should try and go for the job because I won't get it. All of those kind of negative things that go round and round and round in our head. And ultimately, obviously, remember that the more you've got negative chatter in your head, the lower the confidence. And I think that there's a direct relationship between negative chatter and a lack of confidence or positive thinking and optimism and being confident. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through the webinar tonight. Would you, be like, would you like to be able to go into any situation and feel good about yourself, about you, about your abilities, as opposed to doubt yourself and be really unsure that you can achieve things? Now, I think it's natural for all of us to feel a little bit nervous at times and uncertain or unsure. Absolutely. I think if we don't do that, it could be, you know, why don't we feel nervous, particularly, for example, if we've got to present to the board or speak in front of 200 people. That's natural nerves. But when it's always as if you know, you're self-doubting and you think that you can't and your confidence takes a knock, that often it becomes a difficult situation for women. And I talk a little bit more about that when I'm referring to women in careers and women in the workplace. Would you like to be in a position where you're never overwhelmed by people and situations? Um, and what I mean by that is very often women with whom I'm working could go into a situation, it could be family situation or it could be a small team meeting at work or it could be even going out with some friends and there's a sense of overwhelm, a sense of lack of confidence. And I think the problem many women experience is that they don't feel they've got the confidence in themselves and in their abilities, yet they have everything they need to be successful in every way. And I think it's a really, really good question. You know. Is the situation truly that you don't have what it takes to do something or is it more your lack of confidence that leads to your limitations? And what I've found over the years, which is really interesting, is that there have been so many times in my career where I've been working with oh, women of all types, sizes, shapes, women as you know, CEOs, as chairman of the boards. Um, I'm thinking of an international model I was coaching for a while. I mean, these are women who, when you look at them, they've got everything going for them, right? They look, they look good. They are intelligent. They feel, you know, um, as if in many ways they're top of their game. And yet there's always seems to be that lack of belief, that lack of confidence. And I'm really interested in that because we wouldn't know that. And yet, you know, what is that? Why are we always in many ways lacking in confidence? What is that? And what do we do about it? Maybe that's more important. So what is self-confidence? You know, we hear these words bandied around everywhere and we think to ourselves, well, do we have it or don't we have it? I mean, what is this thing? And essentially, there it is. A feeling of trust in your ability, your qualities, and really your judgment. And I guess one of the things I often write blogs and posts about is that confidence is, I think, backing yourself. You know, the ability to say, yes, I can do that warts and all, and that no matter what happens, I can achieve this, even though I might have to try again and again and again, but at the end of the day, I can actually do this. And I think that's what self-confidence is, that no matter who is there beside you or behind you or in front of you, you've got this innate sense of, of belief in you. And I think, you know, the more I work with women and the older I get, I think there's fewer women who really have innate senses of self-confidence. And maybe it's time to see you through fresh eyes. You know, is it time to really examine how you see you in a refreshed way? Um, you know, because how many times do you say to yourself, I couldn't do this, I won't be able to do that, as opposed to, sure, I can do this, and I might not get it right the first time, but I'll give it a go. Are you familiar, ladies, with the imposter syndrome? So the imposter syndrome is women who feel as if they are imposters in their own lives, in their own relationships. They feel as if they are imposters in their work, that they're not capable of doing a job properly and they shouldn't be in the job. And, you know, there's a sense of, of 
feeling as if they're not worthy of. And what is important is that when they feel they don't worthy, they're not worthy of or can't do things, then the outcome of that is that they don't try or generally they don't achieve. So I think it's a really important thing. Let's look at us in a refreshed way. Um, hopefully at the end of this, you might want the opportunity to have a chat with me one-on-one. -on -one. Happy to help you find your confidence, believe in you, back yourself time and time again. So who am I? Um, there's a lot of you on the line. Some of you know me, some of you don't. My name is Karen Walsh. I do lots of different things. I coach women. I run a business. I work overseas. I'm a psychologist by training. I work in Africa, Australia, and Fiji. And um, my work early on as a psych was to work with families and marriages and individuals. I did that for a long, long time. And at the same time, I was running leadership programs and leadership development programs. And now I run empowering women programs. So I write, I write columns and speak at conferences. I've won a couple of awards. Um, and generally, my love is helping women lead the lives they were born to lead, free from fear and limiting beliefs that they will never get to where they want to go. I'm going to ask you to do yourselves a favor. So tomorrow, if you have the opportunity, I want you to grab a little notebook and I want you to grab a pen. And throughout the entire day, I want you to walk around the walk around your life just for a day and every time you have a negative comment about or a thought about yourself, so not others, about you, I want you to either write the thought down or if you don't have the time to write the thought down, I want you to make a little mark in your book. That, you know, negative thought mark, negative thought mark, negative thought mark. And what I'm really interested to know is that at the end of the day, how many negative marks do you have? And just remember what I said to you, the more negative thinking you have about you, the lower the confidence. So when we're wanting to think about what are we going to do about increasing our confidence, then we have to have a much more realistic and accepting and positive way of thinking about ourselves. So that's one of the most important ways to increase self-confidence is to start thinking about yourself in a more accepting and loving way. These are just some of our clients. Um, my work with women has been over a long period of time. Um, I coach and train thousands of women uh, over a long period of time across the world, really. I'm very interested in women. I'm interested in what we are capable of doing. I'm interested in the fact that, you know, we have struggled with gender inequality for many, many, many centuries, really, since the dawn of mankind, but not to let ourselves get down with that, that there's so many things that we can do and we do do, and really the world just wouldn't be the same without women. I think the other reason why I'm very interested in women is that I think we don't give ourselves a fair go. We very often take what comes our way. We don't stand up for ourselves. We lack in confidence. We know the statistics that a woman will earn 17.3% less than the man sitting next to her for the same job, even though she may be better qualified. You know, we, we know that less than 3% of women are in international positions around the world. Um, not to bring politics into it, but I really believe Julie Bishop left because she wasn't supported in the end. And I think to have a situation where we've got a very powerful government, or at least a more powerful one, she would have been fabulous for that job. And immensely disappointed she is. I think it was because she was a woman, actually. So common issues include self-doubt, that lack of confidence, not being assertive, ladies. And one of the, the studies shows that um, not being assertive is really interesting. In a recent study, it showed that men will quite happily ask for a inc an increase at work because they feel they deserve it or they work hard and they think that, you know, it's really something that they should be asking for, and they do. But we women don't. We wait for, you know, to be told we can have an increase, to be told we can have an increase. Notice how I said that. Um, we wait to be given a seat at the table of organizational greatness if that's what we, you know, are in terms of going up in ex executive positions. Essentially, we don't fight for what we want. We don't back ourselves. And that's not Karen Walsh talking, that's research. We don't feel in control of our lives at times. And I think it's a problem for us. I think it's about really looking at all of us as a, as a gender and working out what can we do more of and differently so that ultimately we can have control over our lives. We can be co you know, confident in everything that we want to do and be happy with what we do and back ourselves. So the empowering woman to thrive really comes from my work with women. Initially came out of the domestic violence space. I've been working in domestic violence for many, many years. Some of you may know. 
Um, I'm help. I'm about helping women at all levels and ages thrive. One of my um, one of the things I really found interesting to do was in 2005. I helped the federal government set up the 1800 Respect Line, which still operates today, and then spent about nine, oh, probably about a year, just under a year, training 900 counselors on the line. Now, the reason I say this and share it with you is because I have a deep commitment to women um, for all the reasons that I've shared with you. And I think that domestic violence is one of the key, key areas where women obviously lose their lives, as do children, as do men. But if you consider that four in one is men against women who actually perpetrate crimes, obviously then it shows understandably that women will be the greatest recipients of domestic violence. Um, some scary women confidence and image stats. I thought these were absolutely staggering when I saw them. Four out of five women in Australia have low self-esteem. I thought that was unbelievable. And this is actually research that's been done. Of 13 countries studied, Australia ranked number 11 for women reporting low self-esteem. Now, you might think, why? You know, beautiful country, so many opportunities, so many things we can do. Why are we number 11 out of 13 countries reporting low self-esteem? And by the way, ladies, low, low self-esteem is hooked into and connected with low confidence. Um, and I think it's a really important thing to say is that low self-esteem is how we value ourselves. And again, it's largely around the way that we think about ourselves, the way the messages that we say to ourselves. You know, I'll never be able to get that job. I'm far too fat for that dress. I'll never be able to study. I'm too stupid. These are the things that we say and say regularly. And as I say, that, that really attacks our self-esteem and our confidence. And of the four in five women who have low body esteem, 89% opt out of important activities, such as hanging with friends and family because of the way they look. Now, 90% of us opt out. You know, where's that kind of carefree, loving life approach that we were born with and somehow have lost it along the way? 77% of Australian women believe the media and advertising set an unrealistic standard of beauty most women can't ever achieve. How absolutely true is that? I mean, I see all these beautiful women on social media, you know, perfect skins, no pimples, no freckles, perfect figures, no big tummy, no fat bottoms, all looking absolutely wonderful. And you think, how would I ever compete with this? Now, as, an, as a more mature woman, we tend not to worry so much about that because we kind of move past that. But, you know, if you're in the classic 18 to 30 years, maybe even younger, those things are important. And then when we compare ourselves to... I don't know, what do they look at? The Kardashians, heaven forbid. You know, these young women who are beautiful with all the money in the world. And, you know, how do you compete with that? So, and that ultimately then rocks their confidence. It's a really, really large problem. Social media is in many ways a, a most wonderful way of getting information and sharing messages, but it's absolutely a societal curse at the same time. Research shows that social comparison, i.e. comparing yourself to others on the net, is the best way to damage your self-esteem. The more you stare and compare, the worse you'll feel. So, you know, why I think I actually included that slide was to show you that there's lots of things that work against our self-confidence if we allow them to, but social media has to be at the forefront of those things. So, there you go. Social comparison is the best way to damage your self-esteem. That's pretty scary. And when you think about some of the issues that go on in schools and the bullying and how some young females might feel ostracized or alienated and watch their friends having a good time on social media and ignoring them or, more importantly, bullying them and criticizing them, you know, social comparison is a very dangerous thing, actually. So six things about confidence not to overlook. And I think this is a really, really important point. Competent or competence breathes confidence. So the better at something you feel you are or the better at something you feel you are getting, generally you feel better about doing it. So competence tends to breed confidence. Not always, but most of the time. An example would be, let's just say you're going rowing. You get into the rowboat the first time you fall out, you have no confidence. The next time you go back, you only half fall out, so you feel a bit better. The third time you stay in the boat, even though it's a bit rocky and you feel, yep, I can do this. And then after that fourth time and thereon after, you say, yep, I can row this well because you've got the confidence 
and the competence to row. And it's gained over time. I think this is a really important point. Most people actually think, or particularly women will say to me, oh, well, you know, if only I could get into that dress, I'll be fine, I'll be confident. Or if only I could pass that exam, I'd feel much better about myself. It doesn't work that way, ladies. Confidence comes out over time. I say confidence is an outcome. It's not something that you can do overnight. You've got to do a range of different things beforehand to be confident in something. And I think Many of us don't understand that. It is an outcome. And it's all about what you say to yourself. And I can't reiterate this strongly enough. You know, you can have people criticizing you and calling you names and being rude and not giving you the position at work and ignoring you as an executive female. And you can take all of that on. But the other thing you can do is not allow that to affect you because you feel good about you. You've got the confidence within you. You've got the self-belief and the self-worth that no matter what, you stand true and you stand tall. And of course, that's easier said than done. I understand that. But at the end of the day, confidence is all about what you say to yourself. And it's lost when you compare yourself to others. You know why? Because there's always going to be somebody in this world who's better looking than us, who's richer than us, who's thinner than us who's got nicer clothing than we have, who drives a better car, you know, who lives in a better suburb. If we compare ourselves to others, we will always find others who will be better than us. And by the same token, we will always find others who will be worse off than we are. So why do we bother even doing that? Let's just be confident and happy with who we are and what we are and strive every single day to be the very, very best woman we can be because that's all we can do and that's all we need to do. It's about us, how we think, and being the very best we can be. And it's built by you and for you, by support of others around you. You know, the thing is that we're all going to have some times in our lives when life doesn't work well. You know, I've been speaking at conferences. I speak at about 25 conferences a, a year, and I ask this question in so many of the conferences I speak at. How many of you have lives that just absolutely rock? How many of you on the webinar tonight, and there's a lot of you, have lives that just work well, that no problems, perfect marriage, perfect career, perfect health, perfect friends, perfect body? I have never met somebody whose life is consistently perfect. And at those times in our lives when we're really struggling because we all inevitably will, it's wonderful to be supported by people around you who hold you who hold your confidence and help you through difficult times. Never underestimate the power of relationships, friendships, and particularly, I think, women friendships. But that's another topic. So what are our problems? Well, we lack competence in many ways. And as I said, competence breeds confidence. Many women don't feel they rate. They just don't rate. I was working with a CEO the other day. She's just asked me to help coach her. And she's, we're sitting in a board meeting with seven men, and she's the chairman. Like, she's sitting there. She's the CEO. Sorry, she's not the chairman. She's the CEO. She, she's a powerful woman in the room. But it was so interesting to watch. She literally shrunk when she walked into that room, and I could feel her shrink. She didn't feel that she could handle them. She didn't feel that she rates. She doesn't feel that she's strong enough. She's all of those things. But it's what she says to herself that makes her feel the way she does. And here's a key outcome of today. What we think, so we feel. What we think, so we feel. At the end of the day, a feeling is a sensation. There is no thought. There's no logic to a feeling. It's a sensation. But the most important thing is how we understand the emotion, how we understand the sensation. And that's where your brain, your, your ability to rationalize, to understand, to look at things logically overrides it and says, okay, I have every reason to feel upset or emotional, but at the end of the day, I know I'm a good woman. I know that I've got everything it takes to really rate and do well. And so I'm going to not allow this feeling of inadequacy or incompetence ruin my night or ruin my job or ruin my situation. Thinking in the way that we perceive ourselves is critical to building our confidence. We feel we're not good enough. Um, I said just now, males get 17.3% more than we do. Self-doubt is the enemy of confidence. So there you go. I think that's a really powerful few words. Self-doubt is the enemy of confidence. 
So the results are, if you don't back yourself, you feel miserable at times or all of the time. I'm not thriving like I should. I accept second best. I feel bad about myself. I put myself down a lot. I've no confidence in me. Now, obviously, this is a webinar, and I'm just showing you some of the things that I deal with when I'm talking to women. And I'm also going back to what I said earlier, that I can come across very strong women, very career successful women, very beautiful women in their own lives, or women who seem to, to have it all, but this is where they sit in their own lives. When you take you know, the face off or the mask off, or as one of my friends say, let me take my make off off and you'll see who I really am, a lot of them feel miserable and they're not thriving. And that's where I feel I step in. I'm not wanting women not to thrive anymore. I think it's time we did thrive. I think we did more than just survive. We need to thrive. Problem number two, I should be confident now. And I think that's an important point. As I said, confidence is gained over time like riding a bicycle. We may compare ourselves to others, but we will always fall short. If we're truthful and honest, we will always fall short. And once you get good at skills, you start to feel in control. And that's a really good point. I often say, you know, if somebody's coming to me because they've got a lack of confidence, I'll say, what do you want to do? I want to, you know, be a landscape gardener, whatever it might be. Okay, so what do you need to do to get there? I need to practice. I need to go on a course. In other words, knowledge is power. The ability to get good at something is very important for our self-confidence. It's very important for our self-esteem, male or female. Because we all want to be good at something. We all want to be, feel as if we're valuable. We all want to feel as if we're achieving. And I think the way to do that is to get good at things, to get good at something. And so once you get good at things, you start to feel in control. You start to feel better. And, but if you don't, I should be confident now, and you have these negative things in your mind, you don't back yourself. You don't speak up in meetings. You're overlooked for key positions. And I think that's a really important point. You know, I honestly believe that a lot of the time in my career watching women thrive and women, for example, go up in the uh, corporate ladder, a lot of them, the key thing they have is an air of confidence, a sense of that solid standing in, in themselves and their belief that even people around them might disagree with them, they're going to stick to their guns because that's what they believe in. That's what I would like to see for each and every one of you on the line tonight, that you stand by what you believe and you hold your, your head tall. Problem number three, I want to be confident anyway. So as I said, it's an outcome. It's not like a tap you can switch on and off. Um, it takes time. I think that's a really key outcome as well. You know, um, sometimes women will say, well, look, you know, I'd like to be confident by next week. I want to be able to walk into a meeting and I want to be able to deal with the situation and deal with one of the members on the board. It's not going to happen next week. It might not happen next month. It might not happen in two months. But what it will do is over time, once you get better at it and you get a bit of help or you get a bit of knowledge and you start feeling as if you can actually tread water better, so you're able to be more confident. I think one of the areas that we struggle with with women is unrealistic expectations. We want to be super people. We want to be super at everything we do. And I actually believe we are. If you think about it, we, we conceive, we carry the baby, we have the baby, we grow the baby, we look after the village, we look after people at work, we look after our family, we look after our ailing, ailing father, you know, we look after our distressed friends. I think women are absolutely phenomenal human beings and I agree with the Dalai Lama who said that the world would be led by women and I think it is being led by women. I just want to see more of us step up into the role. And so when you've got, you know, it takes time and unrealistic expectations, you often feel bad because you fall short of what your expectations are. Sometimes you get frustrated and angry at yourself um, and others and sometimes you feel bad about yourself. And here's a lovely one, a classic one. Problem number four, I put myself down all the time. How many of you on the line tonight put yourselves down regularly? I'll never be able to do that or I'm not going to try that or I can't, you know, I can't see that I'll be able to get that job. How many of you, what percentage of the time would you put yourselves down? So negative thoughts about you. So there's a lot of you on the line. Just a couple of you, just send through a percentage on the question bar. Just give me a percentage out of 100, how many times 
a day, or generally, you think negatively about yourself. Well, there you go. I've got one person saying 75%. I've got another person saying 92%, uh, 36%. Okay, so all of them are very high. And 92%, so the majority of the time you put yourself down. And I think that's, that's really what this webinar is about. What are we going to do about this? As I said, confidence is about what you say to yourself. If you regularly berate yourself, you eat away at your self-esteem. And when you do that, you leave nothing in your army to fight the negative thoughts that come your way. 70% of the time, I've got another one. I mean, 70% of the time is a lot, ladies. 91%, 92% is too much. You know, what are we going to do about this? Because as I said, and quite clearly I'm describing, it's affecting your life in many ways. And so when you put yourself down 70%, 90% of the time and you regularly berate yourself, you always feel less than others. You never feel that you can achieve what you really could and should because there's nothing in this world that you should not be able to achieve. You're capable and you're competent. And now it's just about backing yourself all the way. And one of the questions I'm often asked is, well, you know, Karen, I was raised in a family that was very critical and people were actually rude to me and hurtful and so I've lost my confidence. And I absolutely can see how that would happen. But that doesn't mean as an adult, as a woman, that you can't get it back. That really doesn't mean that you can't work on yourself and go on a course or go into counseling or have some coaching where you can actually start to really acknowledge what you do well and truly, truly and honestly, you know, get your life back for you because there's nothing you can't achieve if you really want to. The greatest limitation we have as women is us. We, a lot of us stay in the safe zone. Oh, I won't try for that job because I, I won't get it. Or, you know, I really like that guy. He looks pretty good. Or that girl, she looks pretty gorgeous. But I'm not going there because I know I'll be rejected. So what do we do? We stay in the safe zone. And we don't venture out like a turtle who puts their head out of the shell. Because if we do, we might have to put our head straight back in the shell because it's safe. And safe isn't always happy, ladies. Trust me, it is not always happy. And this is probably more for younger women, and there's a few of you on the line who I recognize who are younger, but, you know, I constantly compare myself to others. Now, when you compare yourself to others, as I said in an earlier slide, you know what? You will never win it all because you can't, because as I said, there's always people who are more beautiful, younger, prettier, smarter, older, more overweight, less intelligent, richer, poorer. When we as women try to rate ourselves against others, we will fall short. So I think part of confidence is accepting but you know what? I am myself warts and all, and I'm going to really focus and on and play to my strengths and make sure that whatever strengths I have, I'm going to enhance. And if I don't know how to do that, I'm going to find somebody who will help me and who can show me and can actually teach me to have the confidence that I know I really need because I'm not living the life I should when I don't have the confidence that I need. And so when I do rate myself against others and compare myself, I don't believe I'm as good as others. I don't believe I'm as deserving. I don't think I'm as capable as others. Of course, no, I couldn't be as capable as others because they're making more money or they've got husbands and they've got children. That's all I've ever wanted. That might be the case, but we don't know what goes on in their lives because there's no person, as I said earlier, with a perfect life. So we don't try or do or go or back ourselves. So does this sound like any of you on the line? Does this sound like maybe some of you um, or maybe in each of you it's a little bit of you, not all of you? And okay, even if it's a little bit of you and not all of you, it still means that there's something we can do differently to change what it is that we struggle with. And this is the, the other one. I don't feel confident in my own skin. I said confidence is built by you and for you. Um, often when, when women tell me I don't feel confident in my own skin, they feel lost a lot of the time. <coughs> Excuse me, because, you know, you are living in your skin. And if you don't feel confident in your skin, then how do you, how do you live a life that's fulfilled? How do you live a life where you thrive? Because you are you and you're living in you. So if you can't be confident in your own skin, where can you be confident? The point is you can't. I want to be the best I can be, but don't know what that is, Karen, or how to do it. I feel confused a lot. And as I say, the way that we have to think about changing that is by 
thinking about you and changing the way you see you first and foremost. And for most of you on the line, if you had known how to do it by now, you probably would have. And therefore, you might need some help along the way. So if you're, backing, if you're not backing yourself, you doubt yourself. Um, it's interesting. Anxiety is a very, very interesting thing for women. I see more women now than ever before in my career, particularly as a psych and a coach, who struggle with anxiety more than ever before. I would say that panic attacks are on the increase. And I've seen more panic attacks in 18-year-old to 24-year-old women than any other age group. And 18 to 24 is prime in the social comparison age group. So if younger women are constantly comparing themselves to others and feeling not that, that they don't stack up, which inevitably they will feel, it gives them ongoing panic attacks and anxiety. They feel then they don't have the courage. They feel like crap. And ultimately, their confidence is eroded. So come back into what I was saying to you earlier about it's in the way that you think. If you think you can't, well, you won't. If you believe you don't rate, then you won't. If you compare yourself to others, you will fall short. If you tell your others yourself you're not good enough, you probably won't be. In your own mind, that is, not in anybody else's mind. It's all in the messages we tell ourselves. Just if I go back to the last one, if you tell yourself you're not good enough, you won't be. That comes back to a comment I made a little bit earlier on in that I think women are the most amazing human beings and there's nothing we can't do. But if you consider that statement, if you tell yourself you're not good enough, you won't be, how limiting is that? Whereby you could have been you know, destined to do great things, but because you don't believe you can or you don't have the confidence to believe you can, or you lack the courage to try these things, then you're not going to get to the greatness that you probably are deserving to get to. And we can, I mean, you could get off this webinar and think, yep, that was interesting, or, whoa, that was, you know, a bit sort of sobering. Or you can get off this webinar tonight and think, okay, well, good points. I'm really going to do something about this. And I guess that's part of the outcome. What I would like to see for you is, what are you going to do about this if you struggle with confidence? So solutions to lack of confidence are many, um, but they, as I say, they take time. What does confident mean? And I said earlier, believing in you, your abilities. What are you normally like? I was working with a woman, uh, let's call her Sam, very passive. She came to see me because she calls herself a doormat. Why? Because she says, Karen, everybody walks all over me. They walk all over me. They don't listen to me. They ignore me. And even if I've got a really good point to make, they still don't hear me. And I, I asked her to describe herself, and she called herself a doormat. Now, to be a doormat as a woman is awful. It, you know, as any person is awful. But people become doormats. Why? Why do women become doormats? I'll tell you why. Because they allow themselves to become doormats. They allow others to walk all over them. And it's time to stop that, ladies, to learn to be confident, to learn uh, to look at what you do well. You know, start thinking about or checking how you think. Give life a go. Thinking outside the square, I guess. Practice to get it right at work, work at home or out and about. Now, when I say practice to get it right, you probably won't become confident or get it right overnight, as I said earlier. But it's not something that you can just practice and say, right, I'm confident. You know, very often we need something or somebody to help us. So it could be, as I said, a self-help course. It could be a you know, personal development guru, it could be a coach, it could be something, but somebody to, as we're trying to get it right, somebody to help us check our thinking, somebody to make us look at what we're doing and make us question how we think about things. Because if you've got somebody constantly questioning what you're thinking and ultimately saying, well, no, there's a better way to think about that or could you reframe that in a more positive way, ultimately what you're doing is that you're changing the neurons in your brain and you're starting to think in a much more accepting and positive way. And if you can do that, then ultimately you become more confident. So you can find a, find a coach, you know, get a, find yourself a coach to take you forward. And Sam is this person I was talking about. So she, oh my gosh, she was the doormat. And we worked, I worked with her for about a year and she, 
Um, she had some really great strengths, ladies. She was really strong at work. She was very confident in her role. She was in IT. She was very logical, very thinking, very intelligent. Um, she was quite introverted, but those were all of her strengths. What she didn't have was she wasn't assertive, so she didn't stand up for herself. She, uh, if she had something important to say and people just talked all over her, she allowed that. Um, she would sit at the dining room table at home, for example, and she might be having a conversation with one of her children and her husband would just talk all over her and ignore her. Or when she got very upset about it and said, please don't do that, he told her not to be so sensitive. All those kind of things that made her then, as she said, just shrink. What's the point, Karen? They don't believe me. They don't listen to me. So she has to learn then to be assertive and to find her confidence to start being really a significant player at that table because she deserves it. She's worth it. I remember the day I started loving working with women. I was working with 27-year-old Sam. Um, she was working for a bully. This was actually a different Sam to the Sam I was talking about earlier. She was a younger woman. She was working for an absolute tyrant. And by the way, the bully um, told her repeatedly she was useless. If you told you useless enough, ladies, some of us start to believe it. But what she was doing was she was allowing him to tell her how useless she was, and she didn't stand up to him. As far as I'm concerned, he was just a bully and a psychopath. And he was actually in a leadership position, which I think is staggering. Um, most of you will know I do a lot of work in leadership in Australia and internationally, developing leaders. And a leader who tells one of his people how useless she is, really he should have been fired as far as I'm concerned. But eventually when she came to see me, she believed him. She was weepy, she was desperate, she was telling me how hopeless she was. She's had no confidence, no self-esteem whatsoever. It was awful. However, I remember saying to her so clearly, I was sitting in my office saying, well, I, you know, you've, you need to learn to back yourself. And she said, well, I can't back myself because I don't know how. And I think the changing point for me was at that time, I just said to her, well, if you can't do it, then I'll do it for you until you learn how to do it. And I think that was a really important point, which I did. I actually stood by her. Um, Today she's finishing her degree. In fact, she's just finished her PhD. I think it is PhD. She loves her job. She's got. Um, she's a director in an IT company. She's in a great relationship. Um, and who said you can't be confident? She, any one of us can be confident. Any one of us can learn to be confident. If we've got the right support, we've got the right approach, we've got the right, I get systems and processes around us and we've got the ability to try things to be different. We can all learn to be more confident. And gaining confidence. Uh, Sue was an interesting thing. She, another client of mine, she was a quiet child, always felt shy, she still does. Um, she came to get help to understand why she had no confidence. Uh, what has a lack of confidence stopped you doing? For, so for all of you women on the line tonight, and there's a lot of you, what has your lack of confidence stopped you doing? What has it taken away from you? I think that's a really good question. What has it not allowed you to do? In other words, what has it taken away from you? For Sue, it was getting her career as a top lawyer. Um, and one of the things to think about is to get a coach to teach you or a counselor or you know, somebody who's got the capacity and the ability to do this. I remember working with Sue for five months. We did role play after role play after role play. Eventually, I think the role plays drove us both crazy, but I'll tell you something. She was a completely different woman in conflict and in with difficult people who tried to bully her. No longer was she being bullied. And track and measure when you improve in the results. Um, she did a degree. She became a lawyer initially. She very assertive and now runs her own law practice, as I said. So she's a very interesting person, um, but she's very confident she, there are times she'll tell me that she still doubts herself, like, do I look good in this dress or don't I? But when I compare her now to how I saw her all, that, all those years ago, a completely different person. And I think the most important point she makes is that she feels that confidence has actually allowed her to get her life as opposed to survive her life, which is really interesting. This beautiful, beautiful woman here is uh, such a fantastic female. She is the CEO of an aged care outfit in Newcastle 
and she is one of the most charismatic and inspirational women I've ever met. She um, asked me a couple of years ago to coach her. She was interesting in that, I mean, she's very, very dynamic. And um, I remember saying, why do you need a coach? And she said, oh, she really struggles sometimes with some of the people on the board. And there's a couple of public situations, public speaking at the time that she was really uncomfortable with. Um, and she was a really interesting person because you would never think that she would be somebody who would be in a position that she didn't have the confidence. And she had everything going for her. That's the point. She had everything going for her. Her negative thinking, I can't do this. I don't want to go to the board meeting. They're going to tear strips off me, notice the negative thinking, actually affected her to the extent that she said to me, if I can't get this right, I'm going to resign. And I remember saying, no, you don't need to resign. You, you, can, you, can, you can do this. So she did it. So I coached her for a while. She got the Australian CEO of the year. She was wonderful. And she said the most amazing thing she got was really confidence. But the confidence didn't come from me or from others. The confidence came from her. And I think that's the point. Um, just some of the things we do. This is um, in terms of, so when I thought about what am I going to do to help women? What can I do if I can't see them? Um, and so I wrote a program called Be Unstoppable. It's a nine-stage program for women around the world uh, to be launched. Actually, I should have updated that. Sorry, ladies, we did launch it. Um, if you're interested, I will send you the link to it. The link's also been updated. But the, the nine stages are personal empowerment, taking control of your life. Uh, followed by your story, you really matter. And I threw that topic in because women often don't think they do matter, and we do. Um, the third one was about trust, love, and safety in relationships. How do we have trust, love, and safety in our relationships at work and at home, actually, not just, you know, at home? A topic on women in business and how to be, you know, assertive and be a great leader or even, for example, a follower. Not all of us have to lead. Man managing stress as a woman in a challenging world, it should be. How to communicate assertively and confidently. You, the emotion intelligent woman, I'll tell you what, um, if I look at these topics, I'll just go through them. Eight is real resilience and nine is goal setting. I was asked the other day, which are the most important of all of these topics for women? I would say personal empowerment, taking control of your life. I would say communicating assertively and effectively is critical for women. And the other one is you, the emotionally intelligent woman. So making sure that your emotions work for us and not against us. When we are in difficult situations, to stay calm, to keep our wits about us, not to lose it. When we lose it, we lose whatever's going on around us. So I always say here's a tip. She who remains calm wins. Um, and I added the 10th, which is not in the program, but optimism. I think optimism, if we can think optimi optimistically and really look at life in that way. And, and when things go badly, you know, we might lose money or we lose a relationship that's valuable to us or we lose a loved one. You know, the most important thing that gets us through is optimism. Of course, there might be pain in the time of loss, absolutely. But ultimately, the ability to believe that things will get better, things will change, look on the positive side of life. And there's so much research around optimistic thinking. People who think optimistically tend to live longer, they're healthier, they're wealthier, they have better relationships around them. There's so many good things that come out of optimistic thinking. So ladies, you got this. So the Empowering Women program um, really was addressing all of these things that I've been talking about tonight. Um, and it talks about going from that to that. And I guess the question is, are you truly committed to changing your life? You know, do you want to do things differently? Would you like to be in a situation where things change for you and you feel happier within yourself? Um, and some of the programs are run for women individually, but some of them we actually take into organizations and run for organizations themselves. But do you really want to work on those areas in your life that you feel are not strong? Do you want to deal with your lack of confidence once and for all? Uh, and I think that, you know, you wouldn't be on the line tonight, would you, if you didn't want to? Or maybe if you didn't want somebody who you love to change. Maybe you here for somebody else, not for yourself. Um, so these are what we do. I'll just quickly show you. 
Be Unstoppable, I've just explained that to you. We run a program called Empowering Women to Thrive at Work. It's 12 stages, and what we do is we go into organizations, and we run them in organizations. So we run them in construction companies. We run them in councils. We run them in community organizations. We've just finished running one in Master Builders Association. And these programs are about going into organizations to help women, not women in leadership necessarily, women in all levels. So, you know, it could be admin, could be secretarial, could be finance, could be reps, anywhere, to help them thrive and to get all the characteristics that I showed you around confidence and emotional intelligence, personal empowerment. We run women's retreats, which is really a lovely thing to attend, normally three days, and we do coaching. So those are the things that we offer, and if you would like to, you're welcome to have a, a wellness review with me. There is a time trade. Now, if you wanted to write that time trade down, that thing that's at the very bottom of the screen here, if you write that down and if you go on, you're able to book a time with me. No expenses. There's no cost to that. Um, if you would like me to come into your organization and talk to the women in your organization and maybe think about running a women's program in there, very happy to do that at no charge either. Or if you just want to have a chat to me about your life and what's going on and you might be struggling, well, just go through the time trade. There it is there. So ladies, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you this evening. Are there any questions that any of you may have? Because if you do have any questions, please put it through right now and I'll answer them as best I can if I can. <coughs> Excuse me. So, any questions? Fire them at me. Okay, so I've got a question here about is there a difference between confidence in extroverted women or confidence in introverted women? <coughs> the answer simply is no. Confidence is different to extroversion and introversion. They're very, very, very different things. Confidence essentially is a skill. Extroversion and introversion is a personality trait, something with which we're born. Introversion and extroversion, if you're born an extrovert, you will die an extrovert. You can learn the skills. For example, if you are an introvert, to be able to be more comfortable speaking publicly or talking to large groups of people, which is an extroverted behavior. So if you are introverted, you can build the skills to become you know, more comfortable in situations where you would not normally be comfortable. But confidence is different. Confidence is something essentially a skill that we build over time. So confidence is a skill. Introversion or extroversion is a personality trait and they different things. But you can be confident as an introvert and you can be confident as an extrovert. You can lack in confidence as an introvert and you can lack in confidence as an extrovert. So that was a really interesting and good question. So ladies, I really hope that you enjoy the webinar series for women. I hope that you get a lot out of them. Um, it's interesting to see that there's a lot more women coming on from other countries. Some of you are from Denmark. Now, I would love to know, how on earth from Denmark did you find out about these webinars? I guess that's the power of the media. Um, there's two of you on the line from the States. How did you find out about these webinars? Uh, ultimately, look, it's fantastic to have you, and I love running them. So love to hear from you. You know how to contact me and love to come into your organization or speak to you about personal challenges that you may have. So thanks so much for coming on the line. It's um, almost uh, 8 o'clock, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Until next month, stay well, stay wonderful, and believe that you've got everything it takes because you're wonderful and you're a woman and you've got it. So. Have a fantastic month and God bless.